Welcome to Relocating to Disney. Today's Saturday, we're doing a little Saturday maintenance on the house. Uh, kind of a standard, typical thing we gotta do is clean the pool pump. So there's the pool pump. Gotta get the filter out of there and uh, go ahead, hose it off and seal it back up. So let's get on it. Well, that's it for the pool pump. We're good for another week or two on that. Let's go do some other work around the house. There's a lot of different kinds of palms, but generally they fall into two categories. One is self pruning and one which you have to go out and prune yourself. Um, self pruning, prune yourself. Anyways, um, what we have is foxtails, they prune themselves, which means when the prawns get uh, old and die off, they just fall off the tree. So we don't have to go and cut them off. And if you look down here on the ground, there's one, we just drag it out to the street and they come by on Wednesdays and pick up all the lawn waste. Next up, let's talk about tree frogs, particularly Cuban tree frogs. Cuban tree frogs are an invasive species, and a lot of houses around here uh, will get infested with uh, Cuban tree frogs. They get all over the house, and at one point we had about four dozen of them. And you'd come out, walk across the porch, and they would jump and land on your head or whatever. So I searched around for a solution what uh, they recommend is two things. One is try to catch these Cuban tree frogs and then put them in a plastic bag and put them in the freezer. Okay, I'm 52. I'm not chasing around Cuban tree frogs. The other uh, suggestion, which is, believe it or not, they say it's humane. Uh, this is citric acid. You can also use um, lemon juice and you just, you just spray them and uh, the way their skin is, it absorbs that acid and uh, it eats them out. They die pretty quickly. So you spray them, they jump away, they go off, they die. And then some other critter comes along and finds them and has a nice fruity meal uh, 
and you get rid of your tree frog. So you have to stay on top of this, especially with us. We've got, you know, a pond down there. We're surrounded with lakes. Uh, they're just breeding grounds for these frogs and they, they'll come up to the house and they'll roost during the day and make a huge mess um, from their feces. So uh, we're going to take care of some tree frogs today. So let me tell you how you make the solution that you spray on the frogs. This is food grade citric acid, uh, vitamin C. You use it, you sprinkle it on salad, you put it in drinks, you do anything you want to with it. This is a one pound bag, got it off of Amazon. You take about half a pound of this, maybe a little less, a third to a half of a pound, and you uh, put it in a spray bottle. And then you fill the spray bottle up with water. Okay, then just Shake it up really good so the citrus acid uh, crystals don't get caught in the straw and clog your, your sprayer. And uh, when you're done using this, of course you won't use the entire bottle, uh, you should put this in the fridge. It'll preserve the citrus acid. And also frogs don't like cold things, so you spray them with cold water, that's effective as, as well. It won't kill them. Uh, you'd have to really like hit them with freezing cold water <laughs> to, to kill them doing that, but it does help uh, hitting them with cold water. So that's my recommendation. Not sure you can see it or not, but the sand crane's right over my shoulder. I'm shooting the frogs. Frogs are running out in the grass, and they're getting themselves a, a, a citrus-flavored uh, frog. <laughs> Once you're done spraying, the temptation is to, you know, spray your house off with water to wash it off all that citrus acid. I did that, uh, my first application, huge mistake. Uh, new frogs came right back. So you leave that citrus acid on the side of your house and future frogs will stay away from it. Uh, not forever, because eventually it will uh, wear off and wash off. So you do have to reapply it, but don't be in a hurry to wash it off. Well, here we are in the furnace room where the air conditioner is. And if you've watched my other videos, you know there's a regular maintenance activity to do with your air conditioner that can save a lot of money. And it involves just, you know, a little bit of white vinegar. Super simple. What happens is the uh, water drain that, that takes the uh, condensed water out of here and dumps it into the uh, side of the house out in that yard, um, what happens is that pipe will get filled with gunk. You're here in Florida. That's what it's all about, I guess. So you take a little vinegar, you put it in the drain, you, and not a lot, like a quarter cup, something like that. Uh, try to do that once a month, and it'll keep that nice and clean. And if you watch my other videos, you can also flush it out with water, which I show how to do that. And you can save yourself a $300 bill from the air conditioning guys coming out and having to do that for you once it's plugged. So this is my uh, new air conditioner and they put the uh, drain over here. It's in a really tough spot to get to. I'm gonna have to get a funnel so I can pour stuff in here. I really wish they had done a better job with this. But you just take that cap off and you can inspect it to see if there's water in it because if there is, that means the water is backing up. It should never happen as long as you're maintaining it. And you just take your vinegar and you pour a quarter cup down that hole. And that's it. Next up, we're gonna do some weeding. Now weeds grow like crazy here in Florida, so you have to keep up on it. And uh, there's a really great uh, weed killing formula that involves Dawn dish detergent. 
Search the internet for it. It's awesome. Um, I prefer the Dawn dish detergent method, but I have a whole lot of Roundup left over from when we lived in New York. So I'm making my way through uh, my stockpile of Roundup and I'm just gonna go around, use some of that up today and get rid of some of these weeds. You know, about once every three, four weeks, we have to go out and actually pull the weeds because you just can't spray everything. Um, and it's a big, huge pain in the butt. Now, what has happened is that across the 11, 12 years that this house has been here, the uh, weed material that's around the house and in the garden areas has failed. So what they did was they put a weed barrier down, covered it with stone, and now the weeds are just growing in there as if there was no weed barrier at all. And the real solution, and something we're gonna be doing here uh, sometime in the next year, you know, it's gotta get a little bit cooler. We're still in the summer months. Um, we're going to rake off all that stone, pull up the weed barrier, put new down, get some new stone in here, and do it the right way. Uh, because like I said, this, uh, going after these weeds is is uh, every three or four weeks you're pulling, every week you're spraying. So use that time to fix the problem and do it right. Here's something else. Water in Florida is expensive and one of the most expensive uses of water is your toilet. So I am continually, it seems, modifying how much water is in the tank so that we don't get a double flush and we get enough flush for <laughs> it to work appropriately. So back to doing a little more tinkering. Next thing I'm checking on is the screens to see if there's anything that needs to uh, be repaired. We did have a windstorm that knocked down one of the panels from the ceiling and we had somebody come out and replace that. It was ended up being about $110 to have that replaced. I can't replace the ceiling ones, but uh, these side panels aren't too bad. And so just going around and inspecting, I've got three, maybe four panels that uh, need to be replaced either from this windstorm or recent windstorms. So from the last storm that uh, we had, like I mentioned, that one panel would come out, we had the guy come out and replace it, about 110 bucks. Um, that one was urgent to be replaced because the whole screen was down. A lot of these up here are damaged and need to be replaced. There's uh, at least seven panels that have come loose. And uh, either they were loose when we got here or they become loose since we arrived in addition there if you if you look like right here that when they put that in that was one long screen that goes all the way in so you get a, a little damage to that screen the whole thing has to be replaced and it's come loose at the top so it's been it's been damaged now sometimes when they come loose you can just um, put new rubber spine in there and fix it. But a lot of times they come loose and they're torn and you can't, you gotta replace the whole screen. That's what's going on here. So uh, probably eventually we're gonna have to have that guy come back who did this and have him just redo the whole roof. You might notice that the new panel that he put in is a little bit darker than all the others. That's because there's a couple of different uh, kinds of screens they can put in. They can put in a standard screen, which is what is throughout most of what you, yeah, most of what you see behind me. And that standard screen is really nice because you can still see everything that's out there. Um, the problem with that is it lets in little tiny bugs. They call them no see them bugs. <laughs> They're little tiny bugs. And uh, they land on you, they get in the pool. It's not a huge problem, it's just a nuisance. And you really don't want bugs around, right? That's the whole purpose of screening something like this in. So you can get, instead of uh, th these kinds of screens, you can get that kind, 
uh, which is a little bit more denser and it blocks out those no see -em bugs. Uh, the only problem is it kind of blocks out some of the view, it makes it a little bit darker. Today we're going to cover uh, something else and it's uh, your garbage cans, okay? After a while, they're going to stink. It's Florida, it's hot, you got garbage in there, and they're going to stink after a while. It's not real tough to take the cans when they're empty and go ahead and just spray them out with uh, some soap and water. Uh, you can pressure wash them or just use a hose. Real simple, keep them nice and clean. There's also some services that'll come by and clean them for you. They're kind of expensive, uh, so why not just do it yourself? Another option that you may choose to do, just splash a little Clorox inside your cans uh, from time to time, and that'll uh, help keep those cans clean. You just have to be careful if you put Clorox in there because uh, it's a bleach, so you don't want to get any of that on your clothes. So if uh, later on uh, you have it out in the street and you're going to go pick it up or you're going to do something with your garbage, you just got to know that there could be some uh, Clorox still on there, some bleach still on there. You want to protect your clothes. But uh, besides that, I mean, this stuff is awesome. Splash a little in your garbage can from time to time. Next up on today's list, we have a little dog statue out here at the pool. And it's uh, picked up some mildew on it. So I'm going to give it a blast with little mildew killer, uh, keep it all nice and clean. Next thing I'm working on today is security cameras. There's one right up there. So we get a lot of uh, electric storms, a lot of uh, lightning, and uh, wow, it's bright out here. The, the um, uh, lightning does havoc with these cameras and I've lost probably four of them. Um, the, I, the brand I use are Wise. I really like the Wise cameras. One, they're cheap, they're easy to use, they're easy to install. Um, I also have some battery operated uh, cameras and I, yeah, they're battery operated, that's great, but I have to continually replace those batteries with uh, new lithium batteries a couple times a year and lithium batteries are about four bucks a piece three three or four dollars a piece for a, a double a battery so that really gets expensive fast uh disadvantage of this is you need um electricity for it um but that's also an advantage because i'm not paying so much on batteries so anyways uh lightning strike uh took that one out like i said i probably lost four of them in a year uh so we're gonna go around and replace some of these Hey, the new camera is hung. You can see it right up there. And uh, there's a lot more to do around the house, but that's all that we've got time for today. Gonna head off to Disney Springs now. So that is it. Thank you for watching.